How about here? Yeah. Yeah. Now I can hear myself. Um, what a beautiful Sunday. Uh, I look, look up in the stands and it didn't seem like that long ago that I was that I was sitting there, but by golly, it was 10 years ago since I was since I've been there. Um, it's an honor to be back. Uh, thanks to the high school finals and to Jessica and Sims for grabbing me to come speak. Um, I always, when I started my career, I always wanted to uh, one day be able to give back to uh, somebody along the way. And if, if all is a little bit of inspiration and encouragement, then that'll make it happen. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'll pretty, I'll, it'll be easy for me to keep short and simple because I'd rather be in that arena if I'm on the range of fucking horse than sit down here in front of a bunch of people talking. So, um, for those of you that don't know me, um, I grew up just north of here, Cal, Wyoming, riding sheep and steers and wanting to be nothing but a cowboy, be a rodeo cowboy. I wanted to train colts, um, run cows, and, and rodeo. That's all I wanted to do since I was a little kid. Um, I turned 14, I got on my first bareback horse, and that was all she rode. Had a great, phenomenal rodeo career. Bought my pro card when I was 18. I went to high school and college. And then went down the rodeo trail, made the most of it, trying to be a world champ. Um, last September, down in Pasadena, Texas, uh, I had a horse there two weeks before the end of the season on my way to qualify for my sixth NFR. I had a horse circle around, bump, uh, buckle shoes, flip over backwards, fold me in half, um, broke T9 and T10, broke T10 completely through, shifted my spine. Uh, pinch my spinal cord off, leaving me with a little mobility issues from the waist down. Uh, as soon as that horse flipped, I knew I knew it was bad. I didn't know how bad it was, but I went to post up and I couldn't even sit all the way up. Um, I couldn't feel my legs. I instantly knew knew that that it wasn't good. I didn't know how bad, but I knew it wasn't good. Um, they they black flatted me to Texas Medical Center there in Houston. Put me under, performed a five-hour surgery, put two rods in these screws, fused me from T8 to T12, and told me good luck. Um, good luck getting walking again. They, uh, about three days after the surgery, they, they make their rounds, and I'm pretty sure that they, they, they do their rounds at 4.35 o'clock in the morning. I'm pretty sure they come ask if you got any questions, and they come that early, so you don't ask them any questions, because who's awake enough to ask questions at 4.30 in the morning? About three days after surgery, they asked me um, if I had any questions. And it had been a couple days in the ICU, and we put together some questions. And one of my questions was, well, how, how bad is it, Doc? And he said, well, it's pretty bad. It's one of the worst that I've ever seen. The way you broke your spine, at the farther down your spine you go, the, the thicker your bones get. And at T10, you shouldn't be able to break it the way you broke it. And you broke it completely, horizontally, completely all the way through. I said, well, what's that mean? He said, well, it's pretty bad. I said, well, how bad? He said, well, you have a slight slim chance of ever regaining any feeling or walking again, or even any movement for that matter, below your level of injury. And I just put a little smile on my face. I said, Doc, that's all I need is a slight slim chance because I believe in a big God that, that performs big miracles, and, and God willing, I will be walking again. Uh, they had both been through there with kind of similar injuries and had left their walking. So 
I, I figured those guys knew, knew cowboys and, and knew that cowboys are a different breed of human and that uh, I was not going to take no for an answer and I was going to outwork them and, and outwork any program that they could ever even think about putting me through. So that's why I went there. I spent four months there and uh, the closer we got to the baby being born, we moved, we moved back home. Uh, for a while, so we came home in April. But while I was in, right before I left Houston, um, I was laying in bed one day and staring at my legs trying to get him moved. And right before the finals, actually, um, I just think about posting on lift my leg, trying to make the first stroke, and I'll be dang if my right leg didn't jump up a little bit. So I called all my buddies for the finals and told them, don't count me out because I still dream about riding bucking horses. Um, but right then and there, I, it, it, relit my fire that, that even though something bad happened to me that, that you can't be defined by that and the last I'm going on 10 months now next week I've uh, put together a few things um, on, on, on how to be successful and so I got three keys to success here that I have wrote down on a little cheat sheet here um, they're not the only keys to success but there are three keys that I have found that, that have helped me out thus far along in my rodeo career, um, my walk of life in general, and, and just, just day to day stuff. Um, so the first is when you run into troubles or trials or struggles along your journey, um, one way to help you get through them is to find the little things to be thankful for. Um, I'm going to share this. It's going to be a bit of a testimony. I hope you don't mind. But James 1, 2 through 4 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For when your faith is tested, it has a chance to endure. And when you let that endurance grow, you'll be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Um, that's pretty hard hard verse to swallow when, when, as a capable human being, when they're telling you you'll never be able to walk again, how are you supposed to find joy and be happy about that? I have a baby on the way, a wife to take care of, a kid I'm going to have to take care of. I got a ranch back at home trying to start cows and running sheep. I'm running horses that need road and trained, and, and, and I can't even wiggle my toe. How am I supposed to be happy about that? But I made a promise. When my wife showed up, I made a promise, babe, no matter what, We've got to help each other and, and be thankful for the little things because, look, I can wiggle my fingers and I can feed myself and I can breathe and, and I, can, I can't wait for that little baby boy to be born because I, I can still at least hold him. And day in and day out, I struggle. Life in this chair sucks. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's work. It's a job. It's a chore. I, I got to rely, cowboy away, you don't want to ask for help, rely on anybody else to help you out, and I have to let other people help me out, load my wheelchair. I got have a hard time even taking out the garbage for my wife, you know what I mean? So it's, it's a struggle, but over the last 10 months, I've seen people in the rehab centers bonk their head that don't even know who their wife is, that don't even recognize their kids, that, that can't even feed themselves, that, that have to rely on other people to go to the bathroom and, and, and change their bathroom bags and, and can't crawl in the shower on their own. And me, I, I got nothing to complain about. Yeah, life's a little tougher, but at least I, I know who my wife is. At least I, the other day, well, as soon as I got home, April 4th, people, they, uh, They've been telling me I, I couldn't ride, I couldn't ride, I couldn't ride because my back wasn't healed enough, whatever. And I got home April, April 4th, and, and everybody's telling me I never, or they want to tell me I would never be able to, but how tough it'd be to, to get on a horse again. Well, I got home April, April 4th, and April 5th, I was horseback riding around in place. Um, can't let anybody tell you what you can and can't do. There's a, I haven't found anything other than maybe reach the highest top cover, and that's just because I don't really necessarily like spending time in the kitchen anyways, but <laughs> that's about the only thing I, that I haven't been able to do that they told me I wouldn't be able to do. Anything else I, I've been able to do, you just got to find a different way to do it. So, always be thankful. Be thankful of the little things. Um, don't take it for granted. We, we as human beings, are, we just, 
even naturally, we just take, take life for granted. Be thankful that you can pull on a pair of cowboy boots because I, I dang sure wish I didn't have to wear tennis shoes everywhere I went, I, but I can't move my toe enough to get a cowboy boot on and off. So remember, whenever you're going through a struggle or a hardship or a mountain, one way to get through is to just be thankful of the little things. Um, next, one key to success is who and what you put your life and who you surround yourself with will help you get through. Um, as a rodeo career, the guys that you surround yourself with, your traveling partners, the guys you look up to, are you looking up to, to, to winners or are you looking up to losers? Um, one of the most important things is having a positive attitude and having, having a positive mindset. Um, I guarantee you, if, when, if life got tough or if I would quit when my first, when the rodeo career first got tough, I would have been done a long time ago. Um, but to keep to keep striving, to keep growing, you got to surround yourself with winners. You got to surround yourself with positive things and people. You got to be putting good stuff into you. You got to be getting into the words. You got to be listening to, to, to positive podcasts and 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 surrounding yourself with winners. Um, we've been very blessed, Shelby and I, since since our accident that. People I don't even know have stepped up and helped us out financially, emotionally, um, spiritually, every, every which way you can imagine. People have helped us out. Uh, we are beyond beyond grateful and thankful for for, for that. Um, and and whenever whenever it seems like whenever I get to struggling or I have a hard day or or not that I've ever wanted to quit quit, but times when I can't see see the see the point of of, of of continuing rehab or, or or why get up and go to the gym when when I can just do stuff in my chair. Um, it's always those positive people and, and Shelby and, and my family and the friends that I made along the way that, that call me and kick me in the butt and say, get up, get going. You you got you got you got a kid that you're gonna have to run around with here in a little while, so get get going. Um, and that, that's really important to 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 have those have those people and, and when you get up in the morning, what do you, what's the first thing you do? Is you get on Facebook and start scrolling through all the garbage, or is it filling yourself with, with good, positive, encouraging words first, and then going throughout the day and learning how to handle it? Um, do you surround yourself with who's, who's the first phone call you make to? Is it somebody positive that's going to fill you up and, and push you and strive to be better, or is it somebody that's going to complain and drag you down? Um, so, as you guys get done going to high school rodeo in here and, 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 and move on to college and, and whatever career it is that you're going to go on to, whether it's, it's rodeo or, or selling toothbrushes, I don't know, whatever you guys want to do, um, remember to give your best, do your best, and surround yourself with like-minded, positive people. Um, last key I have here is you have to believe. The first First thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I send a signal. I try to wake my toes. I try to pick my legs up. I try to, the, I've had troubles lately. Um, I can't pull myself up when I stand. So I have to either have something, or you have some bungee cords, or, or somebody block my knees for me. And uh, the reason being is my, my glutes and my quads are super strong, and I, I don't have full control of them yet. So, I've been pounding electricity through them, my stents or my, my stem unit, um, shocking my butt cheeks, trying to get them to flex, trying to hold myself up. So as soon as I can control that, then I can hold myself up. Once I can once I can stand, then I can start taking steps. I got my hip flexions, I can crawl. I uh <laughs> this funny story actually, so when when we first got home we were um, my my in-laws were in a pile of sheep. And we were running groceries for the sheepers one day, and we were in an old ranch pickup, and we had the groceries in the back. And I was riding in the front seat, but we didn't take our chair with me because I wasn't going to need it. So we were driving, and uh, we were pulling up out of this creek, and it was kind of snowing, and the pickup put us and died. And we, we, I kind of scratched my head, I didn't know. We were about two miles from the house, and no cell phone service, and didn't know how we were going to get out of this mess we were in. Well, long story short, we got out, we got back home that night. I, I, 
I got down on the floor and tried to crawl, and it was it was tough. It was it was a struggle, but I made a couple laps in my living room, and my brother-in-law saved the battery. Like, Damn, why are you trying so hard to crawl? I just drip and sweat. And uh, I said, well, if I'm going to be riding around with you two getting stuck, I want to make sure I get some. <laughs> So I've had my I've had my hip flash and I've had movements coming back and uh, um, but I still I'm I'm, I'm I'm still weak and I can't hold myself up but I know that I can list the steps once I get once I get set up um, so to go back on the course here the the what this injury has taught me is whatever it is that you want to be successful at it starts with a thought. And thoughts turn into words, and you gotta speak it upon yourself. I visualize walking, I visualize riding, I visualize stepping on my horse on my own and not having to use a pulley system or, or, or have somebody pick me up from the back of a flatbed. I visualize walking out and catching my horse on my own. I visualize being able to use my forward without my hand and, and, and my foot. I'll sit there on the couch and just try to lose my toe. And I'll speak it over myself. And 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 I'm strong. I, my legs are strong. My my back is healed. My 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 spinal cord is healed. I I'm strong. And over and over and over and over and over again. So about for three months now, I've been trying to get my butt cheeks to flex. And the other day, I kind of I kind of felt like 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 my glutes were starting to flex. So I had a, I told Shelby. I said, Here, come feel this. And uh, she kind of looked at me and I said, well, yeah, I want you to touch my butt too, but I want to see if they're pleasant. I closed my eyes and squeezed and squeezed and she said, oh my gosh, you're doing it. So what I'm saying is, is everything to be, whatever it is, whatever goal you have, whatever job that you set out to do, always strive to be the best and it all starts with the thought. If you can think it, you can achieve it. If you believe it, you can achieve it. But first, you gotta believe it. I guarantee you, you guys sitting there in the stands that made it here didn't think, oh, I'll never make it to the high school finals, or oh, I'll never be able to stay on, and 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 oh, I'll, I'll never, I'll never. No, you, you, everybody thought that that you could win, and 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 that you could make it here. And from here on out, keep doing it. Keep setting your goals high. Keep keep reaching for the stars. Keep keep. Aiming for the very highest that you can aim. If you fall short, get up and and and, and keep aiming. Um, I just want to leave you with one last verse, and then um, I'll turn it back over to whoever's next after me. But it's Mark 9:23, and Jesus is talking to to his disciples, and he says, "If I can," Jesus replied, "Anything is possible if a person believes." So I just want to say congratulations, guys. Good luck this week. Be blessed. Um, there's going to be winners. There's going to be losers. But you can't let your setbacks define you. Find a little thing to be thankful for and believe in yourselves. Thanks again for having me.